Over the past few years, I've been purchasing suppressors and have suppressors that pretty much cover every caliber that I shoot consistently. At this point, I almost exclusively shoot suppressed, and I guess if you only shoot suppressed, the day will come where you will damage the suppressor, and that day has come for me. On one of my outings to the range, I went to zero in my Radium Weapons Model 1 with some new to me Gorilla Ammunition, Silverback, 300 Blackout, 205 Grain, Self Defense Rounds. Everything went great, the gun ran the ammo perfectly and my optic zeroed in as it should. Then when I got home and it was time to put the gun away, as I moved the gun I could hear some small particles bouncing around. When I pinpointed the noise to being inside the suppressor, I just had that oh shit moment because there really could only be one reason for this. So I proceeded to dismount the suppressor and as I tipped it upside down, out poured a bunch of bullet shrapnel. Yep, it was a baffle strike. If you're unfamiliar with this, this essentially means that somewhere between the suppressor and the barrel, things weren't aligned properly and as the bullet was fired, it essentially hit the internals of the suppressor, the baffles, and tore things apart. This can happen because of a variety of reasons and I haven't determined why it happened in my situation, but it is what it is. Of course, the first thing that I did was googled dead air baffle strike warranty and one of the first hits was someone from Reddit asking the same question because they also had a dead air suppressor that had a baffle strike. Well, luckily someone working from dead air responded to this Reddit post and said that it was covered. So I was feeling better and found my way over to dead air's dedicated warranty claim form. This form is pretty straightforward. You fill out your contact information, your product information, and what kind of issue that you're having, gun and ammo information, and upload the requested documents. Again, pretty straightforward. However, when I tried to submit my warranty form, the website gave me an error saying that you don't have permission to access this resource. I have no idea what that means, but I contacted Dead Air Customer Service. Unfortunately, the phone number that they listed on their website for the warranty department was disconnected, and the general phone number just leads to a full mailbox, so that didn't help at all. I filled out the website's contact form, but didn't get a response, so after a few days, I emailed info at deadairsilencers.com, which is what I would suggest you to do if you need to get a hold of Dead Air, because that seems to be the only way to get an answer from them. Now, once I got a hold of customer service, the struggles weren't over yet because the website error wasn't just on my computer, but they had the same issue when trying to submit a warranty claim. It would seem like they're using the same portal. So we went back and forth with customer service sending the error to higher ups and the IT team attempting to fix this. On my end, I was getting frustrated because I didn't understand why dead air customer service just couldn't open a claim for me manually. That would have been the logical approach, but I kept getting non-answers about how they're trying to sort things out with the website issues. Well, after over two weeks of back and forth and of me saying to just open a manual claim, they finally did that and sent me a shipping label with an estimate of about 50 to 60 days for repair after arrival. So I shipped my suppressor off the same day with the requested documentation. Now that the suppressor was in dead air's hands, all I could do was wait. To me, Dead Air's customer service kind of sucks. They didn't try to keep in contact with me to let me know what was going on. It was a lot of me actively checking in on the situation. Then when the 60 day mark came around and I didn't hear anything from Dead Air, I had to contact them for an update. The reply that I got was that my suppressor was in the repair process, but they had to wait for parts that were expected to come any day, but they don't have an ETA for me. Then another month went by and still no communication, so I had to reach out again. A week went by with no answers, so I reached out again. Two weeks went by with no answers, so I reached out again. A week after that, so about three weeks after sending them an email, and about two months since they told me any day now, I finally got an answer. But the answer that I got was that it'll take another three to four weeks for completion. I guess all right, not that I can do about it, but wait. Knowing what I know about Dead Air's customer service, I made sure to ask what the return shipment process was and basically a signature required by the recipient. This is good since I wouldn't want my suppressor just sitting outside possibly to be stolen. Then just to be safe, I asked what the return address they had on file for me was and they gave me something completely different from what I gave them originally. So again, it was a good thing that I asked considering my experience with dead air customer service, but not a good indication of my personal expectation of them. 
flash forward exactly two weeks since my last email with Denner and my doorbell went off and it was a signature required package for something I was not expecting. I opened the box and there was my suppressor, again completely unexpected. To me, you'd think that if you're sending stuff to someone, it'd be common sense to give them a heads up, especially considering that you're sending an NFA item, something that's pretty heavily regulated and that needs to be signed for. But luckily, I was working from home that day, so I was able to receive the package. In summary, I was quoted 50 to 60 days for repair, but it actually took 125 days or a bit over four months, essentially doubled the estimate. So at this point, I inspected my suppressor and it looked great. It actually looked better than before because it's been completely recoded. And even when I had it brand new, the suppressor's coating wasn't perfect because the one that I bought was actually on display in a case at my FFL. So it had minor imperfections. So it seemed like we were good to go. I was ready to go out and shoot again. That is until I looked at the suppressor mount, which looked oddly small. That is because my suppressor was sent back to me with the standard 5 8 by 24 fixed mount. However, that wasn't the mount that I sent with my suppressor to Dead Air. I personally use the Dead Air Xeno mounting system for almost all of my suppressors, so the suppressor that I sent to them had the appropriate Xeno mount attached to it so they could examine the setup and hopefully determine where the damage happened. Well, this is now just another major annoyance because I can't attach my suppressor to anything because it doesn't have the right mount. I'd only be able to use it if I take the Xeno brake off of whatever gun that I want to mount the suppressor to and then put it back on after, so it's just a huge pain in the ass for me. Needless to say, this is just another example of dead air customer service to me. One step forward and two steps backward. It's a constant cycle of back and forth emails that end up taking weeks to resolve because they don't pick up the damn phone and their voicemail box is full. In this situation though, I sent them an email about the wrong mount and about 30 minutes later, I got an email saying that a order was made for me for a new mount, so that was great. I was getting a new mount for free, but guess what? They're shipping it to the wrong address, so again, one step forward and two steps backward, I have to contact them again to change the shipping address. They corrected the shipping address and the Xeno mount shipped. A couple days later, I checked the tracking and it listed the mount as delivered, but I didn't receive it. I personally know my delivery guy and he assured me that I didn't get a package, so it's very likely that the delivery address was wrong again. Again, it's back to contacting Dead Air to try and get a new mount. I should mention that this is not the first time that I've had to deal with Dead Air customer service and the warranty department. The first time was when I originally bought the Nomad L. From the factory, the fixed mount that came with the suppressor had a defective coating. The coating wasn't sticking on correctly and I could literally like just rub the coating off and there would be black particles on my finger. I contacted Dead Air about this and they were very helpful and offered to send me a new mount. I was happy about this, but then in typical Dead Air fashion, a lot of time went by with no word on shipment. I contacted them about this and it turns out that the mount was out of stock so they couldn't ship it. At the time, I didn't really care because my suppressor was in NFA jail, but a lot of time went by, like months went by, so I checked with the Dead Air website and the mount was actually in stock. I told Dead Air about this, but it turns out, at least at the time when I contacted them, the web store's inventory and the warranty department's inventory are completely independent from each other. The warranty department couldn't send me a new mount even though it was in stock on the web store. This is of course inconvenient for the customer, but it is what it is. So I waited and waited and waited. Then one day the mount just showed up. It took about seven to eight months for them just to send me a new fixed mount for my suppressor. At the time, again, I wasn't too upset because my suppressor was in NFA jail, but taking seven months to send out a small part is pretty much as bad as waiting for an NFA item to clear form four. It was just ridiculous. Another occasion when I had to deal with dead air customer service was after placing an order on their website. For this purchase, I used my Capital One credit card, which allows me to create a virtual card that's linked to a real card that I own. The virtual card is made specifically for a website and it cannot be used anywhere else. Well, one day I got a notification that the virtual card that I used for Dead Air was actually trying to be used four times somewhere else which again is not possible. I knew the limitation of the virtual card, so there's no reason for me to try and use that card anywhere else, but the person who stole that card number from Dead Air did not know that. 
It's a good thing that Capital One was on top of his game and blocked the transactions from going through with no loss to me. It was just extremely inconvenient because when this happens, Capital One considers the whole account as being compromised so they shut everything down and you have to essentially start over with a new card. This meant that I had to go back and change all of my billing information wherever I used my Capital One account. I contacted Dead Air about this identity fraud and the response I got was essentially, thanks for telling us, there's nothing we can do for you, we'll deal with it on our end, there's no updates and no nothing. So as of today, it's been about 3 weeks since I first contacted Dead Air about my missing Xeno mount and I'm back to emailing them every day about the situation with no response. I wish that I could say that I'm frustrated but I'm more jaded because this is so typical Dead Air. The lack of communication and the super slow response in any manner is just what I've come to expect from them. So maybe I'll check back with you on this in about 6 months when I'll eventually get my adapter. I personally think Dead Air's customer service is pretty shit and I'm kinda bummed that I invested so much money into their suppressors and accessories because every time something comes up, it takes months to get any resolution. But that's just my personal experience. I really hope that it really is just me and you guys get good fast customer care. And that's going to be it. I'm going to continue and wait this out and try to resolve this with dead air. But I mean, it might just come down to me buying a new mount for myself. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you did, I'd really appreciate if you can give the video a thumbs up, share it around, comment down below with any thoughts or questions that you may have. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel for more content to come. And if you want to further support this channel, consider hitting the join button down below to become a member of this channel or become a patron on Patreon. Thanks a lot for watching this video and I'll see you guys in the next one.